Conan and Colbert make it look easy to be friends, being closer than ever. You can see their friendship bursting with energy, but there was a time before all of this when there was some drama in their history. Terrible, terrible, I'm You're a terrible, terrible person. I'm a terrible person. Terrible person. And you privately, not on camera, like oh, privately. Oh, no, no, I'm one of these, like on camera. Oh, oh, oh no. no. But how did they manage to make it to the end of this fight and lock in their friendship? It all began with this first step. Conan O'Brien! <laughs> Colbert is trying to do a power move on Conan. He stays on this first step here so that he can look down on Conan O'Brien. Looking down on someone could get them to feel a lot more subservient, potentially getting them prepared to obey others unquestioningly. Now walking towards the chair, what's on Conan's mind is that he knows the host always sits down after the guest. Because motion attracts attention. Mine when I host the show is yeah. guests that come out and stand for too long. <laughs> to ignore, have you had experienced this? <laughs> yeah. And the host cannot sit. You don't down know what to do. It's awkward. Until the guest. But if the two hosts respect each other, they sit down at the same time. Conan gives Colbert a chance to be respectful. He quickly peeks behind to see if he's sitting down two times, and he also verbally announces it. But Colbert is not following him, so Conan does this. I love how Conan goes down very slowly to give Colbert another chance to sit down. Now in this episode of Body Language Drama, we're doing something a little bit different. We're adding an empathy counter. Whenever Colbert insults, disrespects, or makes a power move on Conan in any way, we'll be adding one point to the counter. Colbert already made two power moves so far, so we're going to add two up there. Welcome back. Now Conan starts to tell a story about a horse that David Letterman gave him. Dude, now, do there's you a... ride horses? No, I don't ride horses. But for some reason, Colbert starts to get very emotional at the end of the story. The evil genius, he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. Okay. You gonna be all right? It's all gonna be good. No, uh, I, I feel very good. Is this good. mine? Where's mine? That's Is that yours mine? right there. That's yours right there. But why did Colbert react in such an emotional way? The story was about how David Letterman gave Conan a horse that he didn't even want to keep. Look at my expression after they've left. Look at the expression on my face. <laughs> But the story ended in such a happy ending that it caught Colbert off guard. He knew exactly gone. what he was doing. This is a real picture of Dave the horse at the massage center. <laughs> has met and fallen in love with another horse, coincidentally named Charlie Rose. So he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. Okay. You gonna be all right? It's all gonna be good. No, uh, I, I feel very good. Is this good. mine? Where's mine? That's is that yours mine? right there. That's yours right there. But Colbert wakes up, and this is where the psychology battle begins. No, this is like a vacation. I just I asked you one question, and <laughs> and we're we're how many is we're nine minutes into your answer. <laughs> Colbert turns a positive story into a negative by mentioning how long it took Conan to tell it. We're how many is we're nine minutes into your answer. <laughs> But Conan is being reactive and falling for it. So Colbert follows up with hit number two by not calling Conan a host. Like you, I how heard... excited are you when you get a guest like you? are like, oh, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. Colbert tries to label Conan as only being a guest. Conan knows that he deserves more respect because he's a host of the show. When you get a guest like you, I how heard... excited are you when you get a guest like you? are like, oh, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. I don't get guests like me. Colbert is stunned by how Conan turned it into a positive, but he attempts another jab. Um, <laughs> you you oh both God. complimented yourself and insulted your show. I complimented at the same myself. Time. Conan's ready for it this time. He owns the two things that Colbert said, at the same time reminding people that there's a crowd cheering for him. I compliment myself while putting down my show and then wave to a crowd. <laughs> that was the triple, that was the trifecta right there. That's rarely been done. Uh, we got to. We come back to the show with part two, and by the look of Conan's face, we know that the battle's on. Hey, everybody, we're back here with Conan O'Brien. Now, uh, we did this. 
Colbert brings back up a picture of Conan's childhood, hitting him with a low blow. Yeah. Conan reacts with self-pacifying body language. Colbert is starting to get to Conan with each and every hit. What a sweet kid. <laughs> That's that a kid is... that dreamed one day I'll have a horse. That was a kid. <laughs> he looks like you're not quite making contact with the lens. No. Nope. You're falling slowly in love with the photographer's left shoulder there. Yeah. Yeah. No. But all of a sudden, Conan gets hit with the worst insult yet. <laughs> and this is what Colbert said. They turned off the... They turn off the cameras halfway to that horse story. It's just all of this. The eight insults ramped up Conan to this point, but it was making fun of the horse story that made Conan crack. The horse was a gift from David Letterman, and this is why it's so important to him. If you have ever liked any silly or stupid thing that I've done on television over the 22 years, you must know, you must know that it probably never, never would have happened if it weren't for Dave. It would not have happened. When Conan was struggling, almost about to be canceled, David appeared as a guest on his show. It was something that he didn't need to do. You get this job, by the way. <laughs> so the, was it a theme writing contest? Or yes. What? Yes. Yeah. It was a what would I do with a talk show, and I was fourth. Uh, I look like a melting Girl Scout. <laughs> After that night, that one night, that one appearance, everything turned around for me. My writers, Andy, we all thought that if David Letterman can come on our show and say a few kind words, maybe, just maybe, we can earn the right to be here. And we survived. They turned off the they turned off the cameras halfway to that horse story. It's just all of this. The audience thinks this is a joke, but this is an actual genuine reaction coming from Conan. But I understand you wanted to be a serious writer. Like what happened to the series? I'm not answering your questions now. <laughs> the hell is that? On. No, turn I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but even though Conan's a guest, he still has power over Colbert. He uses his knowledge of being a talk show host to win this battle. Very serious. I was funny with my friends, but I was a really hardworking kid, and I had... Conan knows this interview is running short, so he decides to tell a story about Harvard. But Colbert doesn't know that behind that story, Conan is actually running the clock. And he finishes this interview. You! And everyone turns around and looks at me, and I go, The ring! The Harvard ring is tight! The story was so captivating, even Colbert didn't notice he was running the clock. It's a tight ring! Uh, uh, uh. For hours, then they cut it off and they bent it back nine times. Like, screw you, buddy. And gave it back to me. It looked like a little... It looked like it had re-entered orbit when they were done with it. Conan's plan worked. He made it through the interview. Colbert starts to get worried because he's run out of time and has no more room for insult. You can hear it through his tonality. I, I, I was useless to me afterwards, you know? I think I threw it at someone in rage. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, lovely to have you here. I do love you, friend. It was Conan's quality that outweighed Colbert's quantity. Now we enter the beginning of round two, where we find out exactly why Colbert started the psychology you know, it's so rare that I get a chance to talk to someone else who does this job. It you is, know? It is, I loved it when you were on my show for yes, that reason. Yeah. And I'd go and talk to the others, but <laughs> they're assholes. Uh, <laughs> it's true. It's really true. That's true. Know. He's the only nice one. No, I'm kidding. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, okay. Um, and Coding couldn't even finish the sentence. True. That's true. Know. He's the only nice one. No, I'm kidding. Uh, and just like in round one, Colbert walks in, pulling another power move. But instead of increasing the height with a step, he decides to bring a very tall weapon. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Please welcome Stephen Colbert! <laughs> and just like the beginning of round one, it's just a fight over who sits last on the stage. Oh, and thank you wow, so much. you're the... <laughs> I just, I just found this backstage. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff back there. Yes. 
Colbert had a lot of success getting a reaction out of Conan by bringing up the horse story in round one, so he does it again in round two. But Conan's horse story has a happy ending, while Colbert has his horse getting knocked out of a plane and exploding. What would happen if you threw a horse out of an airplane? <laughs> like what happens to its heart rate? Yeah. Within seconds that the parachute is not gonna open up <laughs> and the horse plummets at terminal velocity and explodes when it hits the field. <laughs> so Colbert's body has a reaction as if he's saying, why isn't the horse story affecting Conan? He tries to mock him again. For days, uh... <laughs> And we went to a Kobe steakhouse in Florida on the same trip where, again, we're not shooting anything. No. The horse exploded. No. But Conan just stays ice cold with no reaction. Horse exploded. No. And we went to a Colbert pushes forward and doesn't go down without a fight. He goes deeper into the history of why he started this battle. And I met you in 93? I think so. Spring of you would we were scouting me. for talent. And you said, you said to me, I do not like you. Go away. Yeah. That's right. You go to hell is what you said. I said, you go to hell. Yeah. And then I said, I know talent. You don't have it and you'll never make it in the business. That's exactly right. Conan has no choice but to admit the truth. He stays cool and calm. And Colbert has to submit and play along. Honesty. Listen to me. Listen All to me. you want. What? All you want in an interview is honesty. Conan senses Colbert's weakness. All you want. What? All you want in an interview is honesty. <laughs> This interview didn't go the way you thought it would, with me yelling at you at the end. Uh, if we zoom in on Colbert, we can see that he's secretly mouthing something. This interview something. didn't go the way you thought it would, with me yelling at you at the end. Uh, this is called perception management, and he's being selective about what he wants to communicate. And then he sure decides to do this. you have a good line with it, that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah terrible, terrible. I'm You're a terrible, terrible person. I'm a terrible person. Terrible person. And you privately, have... not on camera, like oh, privately. Oh, no, no, I'm one of these, like on camera. Oh, oh, oh no. Colbert has already lost a psychology battle, and he just says how he feels. The minute we cut away from this show tonight, I'm diving into the crowd. But Conan is a very empathetic and understanding person. Now that he understands why Colbert did the things he did, he decides to do something that no one saw coming. He decides to invite him on his podcast. Conan needs a friend. Your comedy is a uh, joy and oh, and, thank you. and, and you know what? we relief. do that for each other. We do that for each other, which is nice. You're doing that too. So oh. this was special. Find a time and go get some melted cheese. Uh, and sausage. So good. So, so good. good. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Conan. Stephen Colbert. Conan O'Brien. And sometimes, with a little bit of effort from both sides, it can change everything. And you make new friends. I'd love it if you guys subscribed, but if not, that is totally cool too. My name is Tyler Match, and thank you for watching Body Language Drama.